Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this special edition of Race Face Spotlight. Today, we're going out to Charlotte, North Carolina, and sitting down and talking with Connor Mozak. Connor, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing good, Rod. How are you? I'm doing fine. So, Connor, let's get right to it. You've had a very busy year so far. You're racing in the Trans Am Series. You're doing some super late model racing. You're doing some ARCA racing. And I think later in this little segment, you're going to make an additional announcement on another car that you're going to be getting in. But let's first talk about the Trans Am Series. Um, you've had an opportunity to run on three iconic tracks this year. So let's take a little piece of each one of them real quick. Let's talk about Coda. Yeah, Coda is one of the, uh, it's probably the nicest facility that we go to. Obviously, it's purpose built for Formula One. Uh, it's got all the paddocks already built there. Um, it's got the tower around the back side of the track. It's really just a first class facility all around. And, uh, you know, it's a track, you know, it's a fairly new track uh, as far as the ones we go to on the schedule, uh, with it only being about 10 or 15 years old. And you can just tell uh, they've done a great job and they haven't spared any expenses going there. And it's just been a cool place to have watched races being held there for the last 10 years and now being able to go there in person is a little surreal, but it's a really cool experience. Yeah, I know from a fan's aspect, I mean, when you look at that place, it is just totally amazing. I can't even imagine what it's like taking a, a trip around that track. Let's now switch out and talk real shortly about Laguna Seca um, and the corkscrew. What was it like your first time going down that corkscrew? It's pretty crazy the first couple times. You get used to it, you know, after uh, you know, you're at speed and you're going through there. But even this last year, it was my second time being there. And even my first lap, uh, just rolling around under caution going down there, it still kind of takes you by surprise the first time you go down there. Just, just how steep it is and how much speed you really pick up right there. Uh, and you, your line has to be really precise because you can't see really where you're going. So uh, it's a really cool corner and uh, it's very unique to the least. Well, that was going to be my question. What is it like heading into that, knowing that it's there, but you can't see it? Until you're in right. it. <laughs> right. And if you misjudge it a little bit too much of the steep side, you can really bottom out the car and, you know, break a control arm or, or something else, maybe even damage the tire. And if you're too far to the left, you're just giving up a lot of free speed. So it, you have to be real precise and kind of just know where you're at on the track. Um, you know, I know in our race this year, that was somewhere we struggled. We're still not really sure why, but that seemed to be the one place that everybody would beat us. Um, so I guess I've got some work to do through there, but, um, overall great corner yeah well i think everybody is probably intimidated and probably struggles with that uh with that elevation thing i think i looked at it and it was it was like i want to say it's like 108 feet elevation change from the time you enter it till you kind of pop out of the bottom of it yeah because even once you get kind of out of it if you're still going downhill uh until you get to the next corner so it's probably a pretty good elevation change i'm sure i walked it when i went there last year and it obviously is much steeper when you go out there and uh, you're just walking versus when you're in the car, but um, it's definitely got a lot of elevation uh, you know, across that whole track. And what's the speed that you're you're hitting going down through that corkscrew? I think uh, before we hit the brakes going into it, uh, you know, we're uh, revving out third gear there. So I assume it'd probably be somewhere around 140 miles an hour, maybe a little bit more. Uh, and then we, uh, you know, slow down to probably 30 miles an hour, 35, taking the first corner and then you're, you're right back up to speed. So um, it's a pretty quick change of speed and, and uh, change of direction. All right. So let's shift. We'll stay out in California. Um, and that's exactly what you did. You raced at Laguna Seca. And I think the next weekend you were at Sonoma. So tell us a little bit about Sonoma. Sonoma is another great place. Obviously, you know, it's a track that NASCAR goes to. So it's a really valuable place to get laps. And uh, even though we run a little bit different configuration with the, with the carousel, uh, which NASCAR went to for a little bit, which uh, they're not going to now. Uh, but I think the harder parts of the track, you still get to go through like turn one, two, and three. Those are uh, it's a tough section. And also the S's around the back part of the track. Um, for us, it was another place we struggled a little bit. Uh, it's very low grip and uh, a lot of low speed corners, which is uh, you know, our cars seem to be best with the higher grip, higher speed stuff. So, um, you know, we're still able to qualify third there just, fell off a little bit in the race, unfortunately, but um, still, you know, it's probably the most beautiful track as far as a spectator going up on a hill and looking down, you can almost see the whole thing. And um, it's just a really pretty area. Yeah. 
All right, so let's shift gears. Let's go to the old track now. You just got finished racing at Kansas in the ARCA series. Um, and I know that you've got some more ARCA races coming up this year, but let's talk real shortly about, give us just a quick recap of the Kansas race. Yeah, we, uh, we just got finished up on Saturday there. Uh, brought home our first top five finish in ARCA. And um, I feel like we should have been a little bit better than that going into the weekend. Um, but we struggled with the balance pretty much all day. In practice, we were really, really loose to start out. Uh, I feel like we were we got it, I thought, pretty good by the end of practice. Um, but unfortunately, it fired off really loose again in the race. I think maybe as the, the day kept getting hotter, uh, our car kept getting freer. So um, we kind of were chasing that all day. And then we ended up going too tight at the end, over adjusting. So never really feel like we got the balance where we needed it. But you know, the car's still in one piece. And we've got really good notes going to our next arc race at Charlotte Motor Speedway in a couple weeks. All right, so all of this road course racing experience that you have has really opened up a door of opportunity for you to run your first Xfinity race. Would you like to tell everybody where you're going to be running that race real quickly and who you're going to be racing for? Yeah, I'm super excited. We're uh, going to be running the Xfinity race in Portland for Joe Gibbs Racing and the number 18 uh, Toyota Supra. I'll we'll have uh, a company uh, foundation called With Open Eyes or open eyes on the car, and it's a, a, a company that we've been involved with for a couple of years. I actually went to Africa with them a couple of summers ago, and uh, they're doing great things over there and also in India and Nepal, uh, reaching these uh, very remote villages and, and spreading the gospel and the good news. Well, that's awesome. No pressure. Your first Xfinity <laughs> race in probably one of the most iconic cars in the whole series and being with Joe Gibbs Racing. Well, Connor, we're just about out of time for this segment. I really do appreciate you spending a little bit of your time with us this morning. And, um, you know, a busy Memorial Day weekend coming up with you. You're racing both the ARCA car and the Trans Am. So good luck. And we'll look forward to speaking with you later in the year. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Well, there you have it. Up close and personal with Connor Mozak. Now back to the show.